learned late last week, Intel is making a $20 billion investment in what the company says will be the largest semiconductor chip manufacturing campus on the planet. It will open in Licking County land annexed to New Albany in 2025. But there isn't much intel about the incentive package that was offered to lure Intel to Ohio. But Intel has said its project could be limited if the U.S. House doesn't pass $52 billion in federal funding for semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S. in what's known as the Chips for America Act. And State House correspondent Joe Ingalls reports there are other issues that Ohio advocates are noting should be done to prepare for what state leaders are calling the Silicon Heartland. Intel leaders say they considered 40 states for the multi-billion dollar project. They chose a 1,000 acre plot of land in New Albany where Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger says the company could expand to eventually be a $100 billion semiconductor chip center. And today, the Silicon Heartland begins. Governor Mike DeWine says he and other state and local leaders made sure Ohio came out on top. We worked, we fought, and we won to bring these jobs to Ohio. Here's what we know. An incentive package has been offered to Intel, but the details are unknown. Jobs Ohio and the state's development leaders were involved in the deal. Negotiations on the deal had been going on since DeWine's office first heard about the plans for the project on May 3rd. The state budget passed last summer included a provision to double the length of state tax credits from 15 to 30 years for so-called mega projects with more than a billion dollars in investments. And State Route 161 into New Albany will be widened as part of the project. Lieutenant Governor John Husted hinted at the scope of it. For every six cents of capital investment the state of Ohio will make, Intel will make a dollar. In return, Ohio will get the largest, most advanced semiconductor facility in the world with jobs that pay on average $135,000 a year, which is approximately two and a half times the median income of a family of four in Ohio. It's an investment that will literally pay dividends for generations. But many say Ohio needs to start preparing for Intel right now. Realtors say the housing inventory is already tight in Columbus, especially for affordable homes. Even though it's not gonna open until 2025, there's gonna be people that are gonna be starting to make that happen right now. And where are they gonna live? And then we have suppliers that will be coming in. Where are they going to live? You know, and it's going to be all levels from, you know, the people starting right now to the high up executives that will eventually be coming. So, and we're behind the eight ball in central Ohio on housing right now. So it can't start soon enough. Housing values are expected to rise as a result. Advocates say that's a problem for low-income Ohioans who already cannot find affordable places to live. And then there's the need for public transportation. So I don't know what exactly that looks like, if that's um, something like a dedicated bus line or um, even uh, rail uh, systems. Uh, We want to make sure that people have access to those jobs. The rising value of land is a problem for farmers, too, if they want to continue farming. Chris Gibbs is the former Shelby County Republican Party chair and a farmer in Northwest Ohio. He heads up the group called Rural Voices USA, which says it's focused on bridging the rural-urban divide. It's good news if you're on the selling end of that, um, but it's not so good news for a farmer um, in the either close proximity or even out a little further, as land values rise, then it makes it harder for farmers to uh, to access land and to purchase land. Farmers say they need to be at the table now with local leaders to ensure they can continue with rising property values and have input on how they can have proper drainage and infrastructure, including input on new roads. The latest and greatest trend in roadway design and development has been to utilize roundabouts. 
Um, and I think they're a great traffic control tool, but if they're not properly designed or they're not designed with uh, considerations for the large farm machinery that may be moving in that area, uh, it's not really workable for those area farmers. Allison Goebel with Greater Ohio, a group concerned about sprawl and sustainable growth, says planning and executing good development is crucial. This is an opportunity to start planning today so that we're not doing catch up. Those conversations and plans need to start happening, you know, yesterday. And I think they are. All of the advocates say the key is to make sure all stakeholders are included in the infrastructure planning and execution. And they say it's important for local and state leaders to invest in things now that will make Intel and the areas around it successful in the future. Joe Ingalls, State House News Bureau.